One of the biggest questions I get asked and one of the biggest challenges I see new and scaling investors run into is how to handle sellers on the phone. Look, it's not always a pretty situation. We really deal in the difficult. We help people who need out of a sticky situation. They can't sell their properties, but they need cash fast. And so if you put those two ingredients together, oftentimes that can be a messy conversation. And so in this video, I'm going to unpack how my business, we close a couple hundred deals a year, how we handle sellers on the phone, some of the important questions to ask, and how you can apply it to your business today. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to give you a few simple steps and simple tactics you can employ in your land business today to help you handle sellers on the phone. The first one I want to talk about is so important and it's just simply the tone of the conversation. If you think about it, when somebody calls you, and I'm not talking about the people who tell you to go, you know, pound sand or to, uh, I've actually had people tear my letters up, put them in envelopes and mail them back to me. I'm not talking about these people. Those people need some help in a different area of their lives. I'm talking about the people that are seriously motivated sellers. If you think about it, when somebody's calling you and they really are considering selling their property at the price that you're offering them, they almost always are aware up front that they're gonna be taking a loss on the property. So if you think about what that does to the tone of the conversation, very rarely is it going to be maybe an uplifting or a happy conversation, happy tone off the bat. Sellers are gonna be very reserved, and they're going to really be very unaware of what the process is and what's going on. And so you, on the other side of the phone, you need to be a problem solver. And up front, you need to really realize that it is your goal to quickly disarm, disarm any tension, disarm any doubt they may have up front, because they do have all these things. They are nervous about calling you. They don't understand what the process is. They're looking at your offer and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so low, but I do need the money. If you think about that, that's not setting up a good recipe for a fun, happy conversation. So it's up to you on the phone as the problem solver to be there to disarm that situation and help guide them through a process, through the selling process. The first tip I wanna give you is pretty simple. It, just chill out, okay? Very simply put, you are the one that's in charge of this conversation. At the end of the day, you're the one that runs the conversation. You are the one that has the money to buy this property and to solve this problem. But with that being said, it's your responsibility to change the tone and to help disarm. And so when somebody calls you and they say, hey, I've got a property for, or I got your letter, I, can you tell me more about this, right? Again, that conversation is never gonna start off on a happy tone. So it's up to you to kind of change the cadence of that change this to uh, a solution versus a problem that they have. They're looking at this upfront as a problem. They've got this property, they need to sell it, they need money, there's problems. You're the problem solver. So instead of when somebody calls saying, well, tell me about the property and do you owe any taxes and do you know this, that, and the other about it, asking very specific questions, change the tone and change the cadence. A tip that I can give you that doesn't have a lot of structure around it is be curious, be inquisitive, ask them questions that you really are just interested in. Hey, Mr. Bob, thanks so much for calling. I appreciate it. Um, how long have you been looking to sell the property for? There's a question you can ask off the bat. Hey, Bob, thank you so much for calling me. How'd you find out about me? Got a letter in the mail. Now we're starting the conversation. Hey, Bob, thanks so much for calling. Um, what's going on? Are you looking to sell the property? How long have you owned this property? When was the last time that you visited the property? Very simple questions that a human would ask another human in the course of selling land. Not how much does it cost and how much is your offer, but tell me about the property. When was the last time you were out there? Do you know much about the wildlife in the area? Uh, do you know what the closest town is? Ask questions that really just kind of spark conversation. Because when you do this, it disarms people. They say, oh, they're actually somewhat familiar with this. They seem like somebody I'm interested in talking to. Right, when you just jump into a conversation, you start talking about money and specifics, like people just kind of cringe up. Think about going to a car dealership. Do you love whenever they're pushing you along and hurrying you into the office and getting you to look at the paperwork? And like, you know, nobody loves that. It's your job to disarm the conversation, to be friendly on the phone and show them that this is a no pressure, 
no obligation situation and you're here to help. The second thing I wanna tell you are three topics that you should get on the first phone call. Now this has helped so many of my clients and I think you can take this away and use this today in your business. There are three things I tell people you need to find out every time somebody calls you. Who's on the deed? Are they alive? And are they interested in selling near your price, okay? So many times people go around and they ask all these questions and they get so far along in the sales conversation only to find out that the person on the deed's actually dead. Well, mom owned it and she's dead. And if you're familiar with this business, that, revolves, that, that involves a little, more of a, uh, a little more of a legal proceeding to take care of. And so most times you're not gonna win those deals up front. So when you can identify these things up front, who's on the deed, are they alive, are you interested in my offer? Those are th the three big deal killers that you run into really quickly. And so if you can ask those up front, you'll save yourself what you'll see will be a lot of time down the line of talking to people that you're not actually gonna close the deal with. The last thing I wanna talk about in this video is the negotiation portion. As friendly as you are, as curious as you are on the phone, as good as you are at changing tone and helping the conversation become lighter, at some point you're gonna to have to make an offer and you're gonna to have to make a low offer. And what I wanna kind of leave you with here is some kind of brick and mortar numbers that we have on our business. We normally make 15 to 20 offers before we ever even get close to closing a property. And the truth is in this business, all the money that we make is in the margin. It's the difference between how much we're buying and how much it's worth. And I see so many new investors struggle with this because they come out of the bat and they think, oh, if I just offer more money, I'm gonna win this, right? I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna get the deal. Even if I have to pay 50% of the market value, at the, that's fine. It's one of my first deals, I just wanna get it done. This is an idea that I really want you to squash out of your head. Now, you, you can pay that much if the numbers work out, right? Every deal's different. But the important thing to note is that you've gotta start with a low offer, okay? Let me give you just kind of a sample conversation you might have. Hey Bob, it's been really great talking to you. I got the chance to look into the property a little bit. Let's say the property is worth $10,000. Hey Bob, I got the chance to look into the property. Um, uh, I think that we're ready to make an offer. We could, uh, we, could, we could get this deal closed here in the next seven days and we could offer $2,000. One of two things are gonna happen. Bob really needs to sell the property and Bob's gonna think on it for a second. And at this point, after you make an offer, you need to be very quiet, okay? This is a very important thing. You make an offer, don't overstep yourself. If it goes quiet, don't say, maybe I could do a little more, or Bob, what are you thinking, right? You should be quiet, let them respond. They're either gonna do one of two things. They're gonna say, they're gonna sit there for a minute and think, and they're gonna say something to the effect of, okay, how does it work, right? In which at that point, you need to be able to explain that process. The other thing they're gonna say is, no, that's too low. No, that's too low, okay? So how do you handle that? Okay, the person on the other side of the phone, please take this away from this video, is very, very unlikely to make an offer back at you, especially if you start low like that. They're very unlikely, so it's your job to get the conversation open to where you're negotiating. So if Bob said something, no, no, that's way too low, we're not in the same ballpark. I would say something to the effect of, well, hey Bob, at the end of the day, it's business, right? It's numbers, we obviously are gonna buy this property and sell it. Help me understand how we could make a deal happen. Help me understand where you're at. Right? Again, being genuinely inquisitive, genuinely curious, and just wanting to get to the end of the conversation, wanting to get the deal done. So look, to summarize this, when somebody calls you to sell a property, they're nervous, they don't know the process, and it's your job as the problem solver, as the investor, to disarm the conversation, to ask and get past the red flags, and then to have a good negotiation, okay? This looks different in every conversation, and you definitely get better at this over time. But what I want you to take away from this is that the best conversation, the best sales conversation, is whenever the person on the other side of the phone feels like you really care. One of my favorite sales sayings is people buy from you, or in this case, people sell to you, when they feel understood, not when they understand you. So if you find yourself on the other side of the phone spitting information and facts and reasons why they should be selling the land, rather than asking them questions, what's got you interested in selling? Why are you looking to get rid of this property so quickly? that is gonna change the whole cadence of the conversation. You have to work so that your prospect, your seller, feels understood. They feel like, oh yes, Clint, I think can help me solve this problem. He can help me sell this property, get rid of it quickly, and get the cash that I really so need right now in my life. Hey, if you found value in this video, I hope you'll hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll have all our social handles here at the bottom of the video. 
But hey, if you want to learn more about land investing, maybe you want to learn more tips and tricks like I'm talking about here, I hope you'll join our free Facebook group. It's 100% free. I go live a few times a month teaching new tips, new tricks, doing Q&As with our community. It's completely free to join if you're looking to start, scale, or grow your business. I hope you check it out. The group's called Learn Land University. Over on Facebook, we'll have the group link down here in the description. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you over there.